Hello, my name is James Gesso. I'm the host of the Adventures Through the Mind podcast and YouTube channel. This is not a podcast episode, but if you're interested in ideas and topics and content relevant and related to psychedelic culture, medicine, and research, and you're interested in unedited, long-form conversations with various experts in the fields related to these topics, please do subscribe here to the Adventures Through the Mind YouTube channel. So this video today is not about the podcast. It's actually about my favorite sci-fi books, which might seem like a strange jump given that the majority of the podcast discusses psychedelics from a philosophical, therapeutic, how to live better, be better people sort of perspective. But it's it's obvious that you can't disentangle the impact of psychedelic experiences on the output of creativity in humankind. And for me, one of the places that I find a lot of interest is in sci-fi. You might not know this about me, but I'm legitimately a Trekkie. But that aside, what I find interesting is when the psychedelic experience or psychedelic ideas meet sci-fi and they influence each other. Now, obviously, psychedelics aren't necessary for sci-fi writing. Sci-fi writing isn't the inevitable outcome of psychedelic use. But when they meet damn, do I love it. And I thought maybe if you were interested, I would share with you my top three favorite psychedelic sci-fi novels. I'm not going to go into the synopsis of these books. That's something you can read in like five seconds if you want to follow up. I'm just going to tell you what it is that I liked about them and why I thought they were so psychedelic. So number one, Neuromancer by William Gibson. This book sort of like defined in some sense a sort of cyberpunk feel, almost like a cyberdelic feel. The way that he describes what it is to navigate the digital realm, to navigate the internet, I guess, like early internet concept, really feels like he's describing a psychedelic experience, but exclusively through the language of technology. And there were even times that I felt like my mind literally needed to expand to comprehend what he was speaking at. This is really quite an impactful book on sci-fi. It's been widely recognized as uh, one of the like best sci-fi books ever written. And if you're down to uh, really have your mind expanded from a language perspective, then this is definitely a cool one to check out. In fact, if you ever saw the movie Johnny Mnemonic with the Keanu Reeves from the late 90s, I think, this whole idea that you navigated the internet with a headset and like hand pieces that took you into this virtual world that you could like travel through and navigate through something that's maybe coming to be more realistic these days. That was William Gibson, his sort of contribution to understanding what a future manifestation of navigating what might happen when we start to actually input and intertwine and integrate human neural tissue and consciousness into that sort of digital space. So Neuromancer, very interesting, but it's number one because it's not my absolute favorite on the list. The final book will be my absolute favorite. Before we get into number two, a runner up, obviously, Frank Herbert's Dune. From a psychedelic perspective, there's a lot of discussion around entering into states of consciousness that expand beyond time prescience is what they talk about it in the in the book that sort of put you into the to the threads uh the infinite threads of potential future and find a way to orient your actions at various choice points to prevent certain futures or incline certain futures and there's a lot of interesting uh language and exploration of that kind of work and of course one of the central th themes in the book is the spice the melange that is ultimately psychoactive and for some people gives them a sense of being able to peer into the future and across time. So pretty psychedelic, I would say. Anyways, that was the runner up. Now, I said that my favorite one was going to be the last one, but the last two are actually pretty matched because they're very different. So I'm going to mention this one first. This is called The Void Captain's Tale by Norman Spinrad, an Australian writer. I actually was exposed to this book by Rack Razam, who's a psychedelic journalist, writer, documentary filmmaker, uh, when I was at one of his retreats in the Amazon, an ayahuasca retreat at, at a center down there, his ayahuasca awakenings retreat. And he was reading it and suggested it to me. And the way that he described it was something like, it is a book that most perfectly represents the 5-MeO-DMT experience. Now, personally, I haven't consumed 5-MeO-DMT except for 
in two sort of quasi five MEO situations. One was during a Yopo ceremony and another one was an ayahuasca ceremony where there was a plant that contained five MEO in it. But I haven't had that breakthrough pure toad or five experience, so I can't really speak to it. But it has an incredible way of, I guess, representing or exploring a kind of derealization and depersonalization that might emerge when a transpersonal sense of the infinity and a sort of central thread of purpose within that sort of infinite timeless space tries to be compressed into the normal operations of the human ego. I mean, really, I'm not giving much away, but this book explores a civilization that travels through space, through the void on spaceships that are powered by transcendental female orgasm. I mean, come on very psychedelic. The language in this is is kind of difficult. Not like, you know, not like Neuromancer. <clears throat> so in Neuromancer, the language was very psychedelic and it pushes the edge of what's possible to describe because it's like you try to describe a psychedelic experience to somebody who's never had it. Well, you know, how are they going to comprehend it? But if you try to describe, say, this future world that's kind of psychedelic, but entirely cyber, of course, it's going to be difficult to understand. It's going to stretch your limits. The language challenges in the Void Captain's Tale for me is that it's written, I don't know if the term is phonetically, so there's a lot of sort of future slang that he just presents as being, that's just what it is. It's just in the book, sort of a mix of like French and Portuguese. And so it can be a little bit, I guess, jarring at times if you're not into just accepting that there's going to be a bunch of words that mean things that aren't words that you're ever going to use in your regular life. But this book really had an impact. I've read it multiple times. I've loaned it out to friends. The sequel, or I guess it's like a follow-up in the same universe called uh, Child of Fortune. I don't have a copy of it right now because I loaned it to a friend. Also very impactful for me, but I definitely love this book. It's very short and it's an excellent entry for anyone who is uh, into psychedelic stuff and wants to read a psychedelic sci-fi and doesn't really want to engage a whole lot of violence and uh, is willing to bear with the language. Uh, complexities I just mentioned. Okay, finally, this one is, again, it's kind of hard to parse between my favorite between Void Captain's Tale and this one, which is Nexus by Ram Ramaz Nan. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's actually a book one of a trilogy. And this book is, I mean, the psychedelic elements of this book, the very central theme of it is a drug that when you take it, it merges your consciousness with others who are also on that drug and that this drug is illegal. Okay, a quick addition here is that uh, I actually forgot to mention that this drug is a digital drug. It's a digital technology that when you swallow, it uses uh, wireless signals to link your consciousness with the consciousness of another person. I mean, that's an important aspect of what makes it sci-fi rather than it just being a drug. So that was forgotten. And uh, yes, now back to the video. The drug is called Nexus, and it follows the story of, well, I don't want to give away the plot, but it follows the story of this drug's impact on society and the actual descriptions of different nuanced sort of future drug technologies is very cool and very psychedelic. But what really catches me is how effectively the author manages to create a sort of action-packed and very curious exploration of, of what it is for people who want to use substances that expand their sense of connection to each other and expand their capacities being met with sort of regressive draconian prohibitionist drug war that has seemingly infinite amount of funding and is sort of like almost uh, hypocritical in its use of these same technologies in order to suppress the emergence of these like this drug consciousness, but also under the form of it being a technology. There were several bits in this book that I just felt absolutely enraptured by and aggravated and frustrated by because of how sort of real feeling the dynamic of this, uh, you know, like attempts to bring about a better world through these non, like non-toxic technologies or psychedelics, I guess and how incredibly violent the suppression of these substances or these technologies are by this overseeing totalitarian draconian um, government force. It's also part of a trilogy. I've read all three big recommendations for Nexus. And then the next one is 
Crux and Apex. Fantastic books. I don't have those in, in physical copy. If you want to purchase any of these books or take them up from your library, that's an option, of course. But if you want to purchase any of these books, I don't have any affiliate links or anything that earns me money to shop anywhere. I just think these books are great. Definitely purchase them if you've got the money, support the authors, but try maybe Bookshelf. I think it's called bookshelf.org. This is a website that allows you to order from all sorts of different places, but it all the money always goes to independent bookstores. I mean, rather than Amazon, you do what you think is great, but I would love to see more funding going towards independent bookstores rather than the mega conglomerate of Amazon and Jeff Bezos. So check out bookshelf.org or, you know, explicitly contact your local bookstore. Chances are they're going to be able to access copies of this book and chances are these books and chances are they're not going to be really that much more expensive if more expensive at all, than ordering it off of Amazon. But that's it. Those are my three favorite psychedelic or three favorite most psychedelic sci-fi novels with the runner up that is Dune. What do you think? Have you read these books? Did you find them interesting? Did you find them psychedelic? Do you have any recommendations for me? Because I love reading really psychedelic sci-fi stuff. So if you have any recommendations for me, I am 100% in. Just let me know in the comments below. That's all. Thanks for watching and uh, watching all the way to the end. If you like the video, like it, share it. Please do subscribe to the channel. And if you want, check out some of these videos that are coming up on the screen here from my podcast. Take care.